Luis, you've been working very hard to develop the maths curriculum booklet. This is, I think, second year. Okay, so tell us the reason behind the creation of the maths booklet. I suppose there's a few reasons. I mean, the main, one of the main feelings of need that we had for it was, I think, we started them at a time where we had seven NQTs in the department. Um, and we wanted to standardise the, what was being delivered mm. to the students, making sure all the questions were scaffolded and they just wasn't a PowerPoint so that someone had got off a test that, yeah. that wasn't helpful. I mean, our curriculum is very clear. Yeah. Key objectives, you work very hard to mm. make it challenging, yeah. appropriate to different students' starting points. Yes. For pathway A, that is different from pathway C. So that was fine. Mm. Then we went into classes. Yeah. What did we see in terms of how people were interpreting those key objectives? Mm, really varied interpretation based on experience. So, right. for example, you could have someone who is... The key objective might say, for example, to be able to find the distance between two points. Yeah. And we know that you know, the students need to master Pythagoras in order to be able to yeah. do that. Yeah. And you might see someone going in at what I might think is lesson five of yes. that, going in at lesson one. Yeah. Um, or you might see some in the more likely, like more like more frequently was in the pathway X, pathway A classes, the level being pitched to yeah. the Right. So it's, it's, it was left at the mercy of teachers to interpret the key objective and then and then the good teachers they probably chose really good resources. Yeah. That was appropriate to mm. yeah. achieve the objective. Yes. And not so experienced teachers they probably chose something that was easy or slightly Yeah, hard. I've got the pitch wrong, or, you know, that sort of thing. But the amount of time, like sometimes someone would say, oh, I've covered that. Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, I, I'm not sure how you've covered that. Because yeah. without making yourself sound big headed, you're thinking, well, you're very new to the profession yeah. and you're saying you've covered it. And I've been teaching it quite a while now and I've, there's no way I could cover it in my wildest dreams and my right. whole class understand. Yeah. So you might have stood at the front and delivered it, but your students certainly well, Why do they do that though? I mean, it, it, it's such a, such a simple thing to get wrong, isn't it? Yeah, but I think when you start teaching, you're not always so aware of people's understanding yeah. as you are when you've been teaching a while. That, that, that's right, the difference, right, isn't right, it? Being right. aware, have your class actually understood what you're delivering. Right. Could it be also a pressure that they have to cover a lot of things? Yeah, and move on? I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I saw an example where students, they probably answered a few questions on cumulative frequency. Yeah. And, I mean, that wasn't enough for anyone to consolidate no. learning. So I suppose the booklet addresses that. Yeah. So it addresses the challenge mm. and then the amount of question that yeah, yeah. goes into it. So you, you have been working cross trust yes. in managing, if you like, or creating those booklets. So how many people are you working with? Oh, um, varying amounts at, like, at different points. Initially we had a bigger team doing it and actually then we cut, we went across school but cut down on the number from each school yeah um at the minute there's three of us at cumberland yeah um a couple at hackney and then another few at forest gate will work on it at the minute you guys work really well together mm. and there's a lot of ideas that is bouncing from one another peer reviews is really good mm. yeah. uh, because you've got really bright uh, subject leads yeah. who are coming together and creating those booklets being involved in the project, what, what have you, what would you say you've achieved that satisfied you greatly? Um, I think, I mean, the stats booklet was probably the biggest achievement we felt because it was hard at that stage. Obviously, stats, GCSE is new to a lot of people when they've joined Cumberland. And there's, with maths, we're so fortunate, you know, on the internet, there's so much stuff. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to t statistics, there's not yeah. much. Having the system that's used to track whether changes have been made, and yeah. that, that was a real game changer in terms of Good. getting it moving. In the beginning, we really got the volume wrong. Um, and as a, so in some lessons there was too much yeah. and then that almost took away from the point of us saying all lessons, all questions need to be completed because then if the volume's off yeah. then then people are struggling to ever meet the yeah. volume sort of thing. Yeah. Um, that was one of the big, the big things in terms of it. Okay. Obviously as time's gone on we've got a lot better at ensuring we've got the right resources and every time it gets altered again you teach a lesson and you think to yourself i planned it but i still yeah. wouldn't do it like that this time the subject fascination is probably something that oh, i didn't see that much of at school yeah. so it was it was interesting for us to all look them up we just yeah. wanted to give them a little extra something just this just beyond like beyond the curriculum something to just to be interested give me in an example give me okay, an example so of fascination 
So to do with Ashango Bones and County, for example, like yeah. I didn't know that before, and it was um, Holden from Hackney that would put it on the book. I think it was yeah. Holden that come up with it. Yeah. And every time, then you start finding yourself when you looked at the spreadsheet, everyone populated. I find myself sitting there reading through the spreadsheet and reading yes. all the fascinations that go with it. Does that fascinate the students, though? I'm asking you, be honest. Yeah, I mean, I think as a teacher, though, you have to look it up and because they're going to ask more. You yeah. know, you're going to have a little bit that's got about ten words, yes. and then the student's going to ask you. So yes. you need to know for them to be interested. Yeah. You need to know about it yourself. So there's something about well, there's one of them that that I can recall. Yeah. In there, something about dividing by zero. Right. And apparently, in an American soldier in a warship, he, they, when they had to input, it was in the nineties, I think, right. if I'm not mistaken, they had to input something in the computer. Right. And the input was zero, and, and zero was being divided by, so it knocked off the whole system, apparently. Right. Okay. But it's quite interesting, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, then, yeah. then you get to explore why that's the case. Yes. Yeah, what yeah. happens when you divide something by zero and why? Yeah, exactly. You could spend it's the whole not... lesson sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think, I think maths is often seen to be something discrete, yeah. Yeah. something not relatable. Yeah. And when you come out with something as fascinating as this, or make it fascinating, yeah. it creates interest. Of course, and I also think in terms of sending people out so that they can mix with people in all different spheres of life, like yeah. it's important to be able to talk about other things, you know, and, yeah. and not just, of course, to get an amazing maths grade yeah. is fantastic, but to also be able to talk about it and yeah. say the things you know, I think that makes a big difference in terms of your confidence in presenting yourself and going out there. I agree, the world, I agree. So. Not to mention the multicultural aspect of maths. As you know, maths yeah. is one language that has been developed over centuries, yeah. and certainly if we could relate to a lot of our students who might be from Africa, from the Middle East, from mm. Asia, uh, when certain aspect of maths like pi is, is if, if, you, if you go back in history, there's a history lesson as well for us, yeah. for us to realise actually, um, last time I read, pi is still being calculated, it's an irrational number, yeah, right? Somewhere in Japan, um, maybe that's changed. Yeah. I don't know how many billions of digits have I got yeah, that wrong. Correct. No, I think you're right. So right. Like prime number, there's one about primes as well, isn't there? Right, yeah. something like that. But it's, it's really good to, to be able to relate. Yeah. Oh, I can see my ancestors contributed towards this aspect of maths. Yes. I didn't know that before. Yeah. That's amazing. Straight away, you got people's attention and engagement, yeah. which is really great. And finally, how are teachers and students finding it? The booklets. Yeah, we asked, you know, like we did the stu survey of the students. The students are very positive about it. I think also it's, there's, in terms of being a student, I think there's something in knowing that like, this is the routine we have. You know, we do the, we do our teacher example, we do our pupil example, and then we begin we yeah. begin the main start of the task. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's something very safe in the repetition of what we're doing. And as a, as a subject lead, mm. is it helping you, for example, uh, monitor the standard of what is being delivered in your opinion? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, 100%, I would say. It's made life so much easier in terms of the seeing what's being delivered because also it removes... Obviously, teachers still have to plan because you need to plan what lessons you're going to say, Definitely. you know, how you're going to model it, and that's very important. But actually, it's allowed teachers... If you think about when people are struggling in the... Like, or they're learning in the early stage of their career, a lot of the time it's questioning that comes up and modelling. Well, we've removed that. Like we've removed that other part from people. So actually, now yeah. all you need to focus on is your modelling and your questioning, and you can put your efforts into that rather than scrolling and looking. Does this stifle creativity, teacher freedom? I personally don't feel it does yeah. um, because it's in line probably with what my yeah you know cause, um, I don't feel it does. I think you can still be creative. So we've defined the key objective. Mm. That's our curriculum. Yeah. Uh, we've given them a set of questions. It's not that's not anything different from maybe they might use textbook for example. No, no, yeah, right. Yeah. So we just pitched it a bit. Yeah. We tightened it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So if teachers want to be creative, mm. yeah, they they could stick to the modelling example given. Mm. Be creative in the way they perform yeah. in the class. Yeah. You know, animate themselves as well as come up with their own examples. Mm. We just talked about fascination. Yeah. Right. Um, so it doesn't really stop teachers from and. In a, in a classroom, right? Anything, anything can happen. Yeah. Um, you might think that a particular uh, example uh, is enough for students to understand, but you might suddenly realize there's a clever kid right at the back somewhere um, asking a smart question. You might have to sort of be creative yeah, enough for you course. to answer. I mean, I think anyone who feels it like staff with their creativity, that the question is, what, what do you feel you could stop doing? Mm. Um, because. I mean, I, I can't think of anything that there isn't a way around, you know, if you wanted to try something, there's a way to make it.